A nurse is performing a follow-up assessment on a client who began taking Ramipril for hypertension. Which client statement indicate a need for further teaching? We are doing a lot of uh, negative questions here. Negative questions in the sense need for further teaching because those are important to, to be like practiced with. So we don't make any silly mistakes, okay? So which one need for further teaching, which means we are looking for something bad, okay? We are looking for something bad. And we have four options here. Number one, I feel lightheaded when I stand up. So I sit on the edge of the bed before getting up. Number two, if I get a dry trickling cough, I need to let the doctor know. Number three, I should eat foods high in potassium to help my heart. And number four, I should take this medicine even if my BP is normal. Okay. Let's think about it. And I, I see that your answers are coming. Okay, three, all right. So let's think about it. And I know there will be some of you who might be still not sure about the answer. So what is it? Like we are looking for something bad. And I think I can eliminate number one. Okay, it's a good thing, right? I feel lightheaded when I stand up. So I sit on the edge of the bed before getting up. That's a good thing to do because we know Ramipril is given for hypertension. Now, what kind of medicine is Ramipril? What is the group where Ramipril is going to be with? ACE in yes, it's an ACE inhibitor, right? So we know that hypotension can happen. I mean, whenever somebody is taking some medicine when for blood pressure, it can come down so quick and people may feel lightheaded and dizzy and it's a good thing to do. And because it's a good thing to do, it's not going to be our answer. Okay, now I should take this medicine even if my BP is normal. I would say that's a good thing to do because we don't want them to stop taking the medicine whenever the blood pressure is normal. Actually, their blood pressure is normal because they are taking the medicine. Right, So they should continue taking it. And because we are looking for something bad and this is good, it's not going to be our answer. So far, so good. Okay, now we'll be between two and three. Two says, if I get dry cough, tickling cough, I need to let the doctor know. And that's yes, they should let the doctor know because let me go back to, let me tell you this, oh, not that, here, this is uh, the side effects of ACE inhibitors. And you can see that there is cough because the ACE, which is angiotensin converting enzyme, that enzyme is needed to remove a substance called bradykinin from our body. Okay. Now, when there is no ACE inhibitors, you know, because we are doing ACE inhibitor, inhibitor, right? ACE inhibitor, right? So when you're using that, we are, we are kind of inhibiting or stopping or, or blocking the ACE, which is the enzyme, angiotensin converting enzyme. So when we block that enzyme, it is not going to remove that bradykinin and bradykinin kind of you know, builds up and that causes the cough and that causes this irritating cough, which will not go away. So that needs to be reported because maybe we can switch them to kind of the same uh, kind of category medicine, antihypertensive medicine, but a little different. And that's called ARB, angiotensin receptor blocker. So we can use that instead of ACE inhibitors. Because angiotensin receptive blocker let that angiotensin converting enzyme come, but it just blocks the receptor. So the, the enzyme is still there. And we just need the enzyme to take care of the bradykinin. Okay. So we discuss all this again uh, in detail in Aplaran course. So if you are there in the pharmacology session of Aplaran full course, you will see all this explanation in detail. But cough is something we need to report. So that means one is not our answer, two is not our answer, four is not our answer. So the answer is three. But I want to give you a proper explanation on why 
three is the answer. It says I should eat food high in potassium. And it's ramipril, which is anything pril, P-R-I-L, that's an ACE inhibitor medicine. So this medicine, as we know, it inhibits angiotensin converting enzyme, right? And like I said, angiotensin converting enzyme is also needed in our body because that's the enzyme which stimulates, you know, and the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. And that's how adrenal gland gets the message to produce aldosterone. Now, adrenal glands are this tiny, bitty, teeny, tiny glands which are on top of our kidney. So we have two of them, adrenal gland. So whenever this adrenal gland is stimulated, it produces a hormone called aldosterone. Now, aldosterone is super important because aldosterone pushes the potassium out of our body. Okay. Now, what happens when we give an ACE inhibitor? Okay. So that's like, this is ACE. Okay. Angiotensin converting enzyme. That's ACE. Now, what if we give an ACE inhibitor? Like any of this pril medicine, lisinopril, romipril, right? So those kind of enolopril. So those kind of pril medicine, when we give it, we are going to block that. So the adrenal gland cannot produce enough aldosterone. So the potassium is not getting out of the body the potassium is going to stay. Okay, care for potassium, okay? So potassium is staying in the body. When we use ACE inhibitor, this doesn't happen, so potassium stays. Which means the patient is going to have, most of the time, one of the side effects you will see is potassium retention, and patient will be having hyperkalemia. Potassium stays in the body when we use ACE inhibitor, okay? Now, if someone is going to have hyperkalemia, do we want them to take more potassium? And the answer is no, right? Because it says, I should eat food high and rich in potassium. No, we don't want you to eat high potassium food because you are already holding on to the potassium. It can be really bad for the heart, okay? And because of that, and because we are looking for something bad, need for further teaching, something bad, we are going to select three as our answer. Okay. Are we good with that? Is that clear?